has appointed the youth to be his helping hand. These youth are not just the future of the church, they are very important to today. CIA takes you on a journey of discovery as you learn more about this transformational arm of the Adventist Youth Ministry. It was John McKim, youth leader of the Southeastern California Conference, who first used the term Pathfinder. The origins of Pathfinder lies in the creation of the Missionary Volunteer Societies in 1907. They were the concept of Director of Sabbath School for the General Conference, Flora Plummer, and Milton Kern, the first youth director for the World Church. Junior Missionary Volunteer, or JMV Societies, were later added in 1909. The idea of local clubs doing outdoor activities was advocated in 1922 by author W. Spaulding, Director of Family Ministries at the General Conference. The first camp out by Junior Missionary Volunteers was at Townline Lake Michigan in 1926. By 1931, the Pathfinder emblem, the flag, and a song were all created. The first Pathfinder Fair was held in September 1951 and the first Campery in May 1954, both in California. Pathfinding has grown significantly since 1985. It has adapted to many changing circumstances, both globally and locally, and it's true for the Central Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. For example, the Eagles Pathfinder Club, in this new normal, has adapted to meeting online every week. Their club leaders, Janisha Bryan Thomas and Fabian Thomas, spares no effort in spending time training the youth about personal and spiritual development. The one dot tells us that um, that is low temperature. So for some of the garments that we're going to be using or ironing, we cannot have the iron being too hot. If the iron is too hot, what will happen? Burn it, burn it close. Yes, man. Big time burning and it can't come back. This has impacted their social life significantly and many are proud to be Pathfinders. I am a Pathfinder because of the fun activities they do such as puppetry, heritage of the church and laundry honor, soap crafting as well. You should become a Pathfinder too. As a Pathfinder, you have a lot of responsibilities, along with the responsibility that you have to have to manage your time and debit your time into doing all of these activities. You also have to develop determination to complete some of these tasks. And determination is basically perseverance. And perseverance is an important tool that a Pathfinder must have in their tool belt. You will no doubt need this to complete certain honors or to complete drills in the hot sun. But no matter the circumstance, pairing perseverance with discipline will make a world of difference in your life. Hi everyone, the name is Jadine Smith and I'm a proud member of the Daniel Pathfinder Club. I have been a part of this club since I was a child and I believe that it has contributed to my development holistically, not just spiritually. Being a part of this club, I have learned so much and it has helped me in my own personal mission in serving Christ and also my fellow man. One of the ways that I do this is, or a few of the ways that I do this is by serving in the youth ministry department, not only of my church, but also of my zone, along with being an educator and being involved in community development. 
Before the pandemic, it was customary for these youth to meet and engage in massive outreach activities through the Operation Save a Youth OSE initiative. Today, as they adapt to the new norm, they are engaged in one-to-one -one outreach and social media evangelism. They are insistent that their transformation will continue to touch many lives for Christ. Let's now look at some practical ways training as a Pathfinder could impact your life as you impact the lives of others. In the Master Guide program, I have benefited a lot. I have learned a lot about discipline and self-confidence, survival skills and life skills. But most importantly for me was what I learned in terms of life-saving skills. And that has proven beneficial to me on more than one occasion. I remember, for example, a couple of years ago, I was having lunch in Silo or St. Elizabeth with a couple of friends. And one of them, they had their little son. He's about 11 years old. Well, he was about 11 years old at the time. And we were all at the table ready to have lunch. We ordered lunch and while it was being prepared, the little boy he was given a bottle of drink, um, some soda of sorts, while the three of us as adults, we were having a conversation. And while we were there talking, I noticed the little boy who was sitting to my right and I noticed that his face started to get puffed up, started to get red. And as I looked closer, his eyes now started to run water. I realized that he was in distress, that something was wrong. The other two persons with me, they didn't notice what was happening. But I turned to the little boy and I asked him, are you okay? He just shook his head. I said, can you breathe? He shook his head again and you could see his face was puffing up even more. The tears the tears were really running down his, his cheeks now. And um, so I realized that he really could not breathe. He was actually drowning on the, the drink that he was having. So then I said to him, try and cough. And he managed a little cough. I had the little boy bend over. He was coughing and coughing until he, could, he was able now to start breathing properly. When he sat back down and he was getting his breath, his father then turned to him and was asking what was happening. And I explained to him, his son was drowning right there at the table. The Master Guide program is very beneficial and I would, I would recommend that every Pathfinder, every Pathfinder, in fact, every individual learn a life-saving skill because you just never know the next life that might be in danger might be yours. I can recall actually two two cases offhand where I've had to use not necessarily survival skills, but emergency response skills um, on the job, actually. Uh, two separate work incidents. Uh, there was one where I was working late one night and uh, detected a fire in the office. So, well, luckily one, I was there working late when it happened. It was an electrical fire. So I was able to calmly secure the location, identify a fire extinguisher to put that fire out and ensure there was no damage to the office. Uh, another incident happened at another location where I was working, and this is more first aid related, where I was able to identify that a co-worker was in distress. She was actually asthmatic, um, having respiratory problems. Uh, I was able to identify quickly, calm her down, and get a nebulizer to her so she could um, well, restore her breathing and without any ill effect. You have probably seen a Pathfinder or a Master Guide clad in his uniform and you probably think, wow, he or she is well decorated. Well, they are not just decorations, they are actually honors. 
And today, I am here to share with you just a few of the honors I have completed that have assisted me with my self-development. The honor, Christian grooming, gives both ladies and gentlemen tips on how to care for themselves. Now, caring for yourself is not just on the outside, but of course, it includes some physical activity, some exercising. And that's why the physical fitness honor gives us this. Now, I must admit that consistency is what is needed in this honor. However, this honor does not only focus on the exercising, but also the importance of balancing your nutritional goals. Bible marking is third on my list. A development of self must include reading the Bible and importantly, knowing how to make notations. Finally, the honors of Christian storytelling and junior witnessing. Those honors will help you to develop your public speaking skills and importantly, help you to share the good news of Jesus. As our motto says, the Advent message to all the world in my generation. Undoubtedly, with such an army of youth, rightly trained, might furnished, how soon will the gospel of a crucified, risen, and a soon-coming Savior be carried to the whole world?